Hey, this is Lula, and this is the series where we look at the most expensive house for sale in each state. We are all the way up in Maine, that's right, the Lobster Coast, Canada Junior, the native habitat for old lighthouse keepers who warn you of a ship that appears on foggy evenings. But once you've seen it, death will surely follow. Anyway, I don't know that much about Maine. Uh, this... Obviously, we've got a, a beautiful house on the coast here. It is 11,600,000 for a five bed, seven bath. So that's, that's a, a moderate, I would say, moderate sticker price for most expensive house in the state and fairly small compared to some of the other houses we've looked at. Uh, but considering this opening picture, I'm thinking there might be like a, a natural splendor kind of element uh, to to balance it out. So let's let's find out. All right. Yes, we are seeing more splendor. Uh, we got some ivy creeping up the house, which it looks so nice. I know it's bad for the house. It looks so nice. Uh, we got some beautiful stonework here. Um, it looks like most of the, the trees around here are, are pines, which kind of fits in with my understanding of the, the climbs. I wish I knew more about architecture so I could tell you what style this is, because it's, it's definitely a bit different than what we've looked at before. Uh, I don't know that I dislike it, though it is, it's very much just like this single contiguous shape here. Uh, but maybe that's, maybe that's good when, when those nor'easters start a blowing. I don't know. Yep, we've, we've definitely got natural splendor here. Do you think that sky is photoshopped? I wonder. Uh, I do know that sometimes they photoshop the skies in these pictures. We got some strange stone orbs, uh, in, in the greenery. They, they really want us to see these orbs. And here is the walk up to the front of the house. They've definitely done some sort of weird blurring because look at the, like the trees are doing the same thing that the clouds in the sky. Oh, what is that? It's like a, a motion effect, like we're running directly at the house. We've got another angle there and yet another. Come on, let's get inside. I've never been a big fan of stucco, which the siding here is stucco. I know that it does have some advantages in certain climates. I don't know that Maine is that climate, but maybe I don't, I don't know enough about stucco or Maine to tell you. Uh, I do like this two-tone with these, these geometric framing things around here. And we've got some very bold woodwork inside. That is, that's, that's not a, a chair rail. That's a small person rail. And we've got a tile floor, which uh, tile floors can be very nice, but they're also very cold. So unless we've got, we might have some sort of, you know, heated tile situation going on here. But other than that, it's going to be an awfully cold floor once you hit the, the snowy months. It looks like we've got this little entryway that is, it's separated, but it's still open to the space. I... I kind of like that. Coming through to kind of a, a warm sitting area. You could see the ocean out through this window here. Uh, so far, I'm, I'm on board. I gotta say, having, having the, the chair rail up this high really does limit your options for color. I mean, the, it's a nice wood color and it's beautiful woodwork. Um, I'm trying to decide if it would look weird to have a color on the wall here because right now everything is just brown and white and there's really not, a, you know, you could have gone for not white furniture, perhaps. Uh, but other than that, there's not a lot of opportunity for new colors. Oh, I see we've got a porthole in the wall here uh, so that we can feel like we're on a boat. Uh, I like this little this little nook by the fireplace. That's cozy. That's cute. We got a nice long uh, seating area by the window here. I, I like the idea of these window seats, but they always seem just like a little too shallow. 
Like, you're not going to really be able to snug up in there because your, you know, butt's going to be half hanging off of it. Um, but you got you got some auxiliary seating for when you give up on the, the window seat. And this arch that runs through to, to divide this off, it it does, that's a nice little feature. I feel like I'm not complaining about this house enough, but I, I also feel like it, it hasn't given us... Uh, enough personality to judge. This is very, very clean, very staged. It's a little pottery barn. I'll, I'll say that. There's, look at all this gray. It's a little pottery barn. Um, it looks like maybe we've got some subtle color here. Um, but you know, with all this wood everywhere, I was, I was debating whether you could put a color on the wall here. You could definitely put a color in this little nook here. That's a great opportunity for a feature wall and they did not take it brown and white another angle on that fireplace and we've got a second fireplace this one is that like a gold mosaic tile around it that's um a little groovy for my taste uh let's let's call it that uh we've got another we're making good use of archways to divide spaces this uh with the, I feel like there's a right way to use this little indent in the wall. Um, you know, the built-in uh, storage is nice. I feel like there's supposed to be a picture. I haven't seen any art anywhere in this house. I assume that's because this has been staged, maybe. Um, but yeah, that's you, you went through all the the trouble of putting in some some candles and some flowers here. That this is a space in need of a painting or two. Um, other than that, like without that, it looks a little like an altar, you know, like you're supposed to make an altar there. Oh, here we do have, we do have art. They know that art exists. They just don't have very much of it, apparently. Uh, and they've chosen uh, white art, um, which, which really, you know, breaks up the color scheme of the rest of the room. Oh, Lord. Wait, why would you get paintings that match the wall? The windows are beautiful. Uh, the woodwork throughout the house is, is very nice. You got a white carpet. Really? You're going to eat over a white carpet? Are you insane? Oh, this, this room's gray. What a nice change of pace. We're in a gray room now. I assume this is, we're going to a kitchen because I see some sort of pastry under a dome. Love a good pastry dome. Yep, here it is. There's the, you know what? It's moderately sized compared to what we've seen in other houses. Uh, oh, we do have a disguised refrigerator. The refrigerator is masquerading as a pantry because you can't let them know you eat. You cannot let them know that you are a mortal who needs food or you will die. Uh, and we've got some stacked ovens. Uh, sink over here. We have a space for stools at the kitchen island, but we don't actually have any stools. So either the people staging this house uh, just didn't think it was worth it, or uh, this, this house said no. No to people staring at me while I cook. You can't be in here. And I respect that. I do. This is an interesting little... I, I feel like this is supposed to serve, because the, the kitchen's behind us, this is supposed to serve the purpose of like a, a breakfast nook or a kitchen table. Uh, but it's so stiff and formal. It's, it's small enough to be just a kitchen table, but it's not cozy enough. You know, the kitchen table's supposed to feel like the dining room is, is for like, oh, we've prepared a meal and we're all going to sit down together and, and have a meal. Whereas like the kitchen table is somewhere that you're supposed to go at like, you're supposed to be able to go there at like two in the morning when you can't sleep and you like need a snack in the middle of the night. You run into someone else that also couldn't sleep and you have like the best conversation you've ever had. And yeah, that's that's the space. You can't do that here. You can only talk about economics at this table. I don't know how I feel about having the two chairs staring at the water so close to the table. Um, I'm imagining that you're trying to like have a, a little brunch at this table 
and grandpa's just sitting here like he gazing out at the sea and making ominous statements um and of course everything the the floor is gray the wall is gray the furniture is gray uh, the, the woodwork in the doors is the only color in the room is this wallpaper you were like oh let's find a fun wallpaper for the kitchen and then you found gray they've also got it down here that might be stonework maybe i don't know i don't it seems too consistent to be stonework uh we've got a shit ton of china cabinetry space up here and all of the dishes are white oh lord we have a bowl of eggs those are farm fresh eggs that have not been washed so you could just leave them on the counter they've got a very healthy crop of green onions here that they are i i try to keep my green onions like this and they never look that nice they they get like pathetic that you know like they're all this sad fallen down stock before too long it's and the water gets disgusting i would not put it in a clear container because that water just becomes a sludge all right, it looks like we've got two sinks in this kitchen. There was one on the island. There's one over here. We've got an RO and a soap dispenser. Um, and then this, I, is this a coffee thing? I assume that's maybe a coffee thing. Uh, here's another gray room. I'm not sure how this relates uh, ge geographically to the rest of the gray rooms in this house, uh, but here it is. Just It's just a little sitting room. It's just a, a room to sit around and and stare at the gray and this little car. And then what's this book on the table? The book is called Orchard. Uh, I don't know what that is. Anyway, oh, we've got like a little mud room coming in from the porch. And we got lots of flowers. That's that's so cheery and, and happy. They do know what color is. You know what? They have to bring a lot of flowers in. And, and they've got, Jesus Christ, they've got the vases for it. What? All right, I have to tell you a story now. I, I was doing a performance a while back, and, and a friend who was going to see me came came by my apartment first. And she, she brought flowers. It was very sweet. But she also brought a vase with. And she said, I thought about it, and I didn't think you were the type of person who owns a vase. Uh, which which was a deeply offensive thing to say, mostly because I did not own a vase, and and I it became this this self consciousness uh, for me that I well you know I I don't have my however together my life is it's it's not together enough to own a vase yet, and uh, I, I finally did acquire a vase, but it was it was a uh, several years later, uh, anyway. These people, this is going to be me. <laughs> no, you know what? This is, this is going to be me in a few years because I think I find myself looking at vases in like secondhand stores every so often. And I'm like, do I need a second face? Do I really need to prove it to, to Ashley that I'm a vase person now? I think, I think maybe I've got a kindred spirit here with this vase hoarder. Oh, we got a workout room with a punching bag and some suspended straps and some free weights. Uh, not not like a very elaborate setup, but you don't you don't need a thousand machines. It looks like they they know what they're doing. This is back at the front entrance, I believe. I think the front door is over here, and these are the stairs up. Oh, and we're going upstairs. We got a, a light fixture here. They're still not not going crazy with any sort of colors, but at least we've got a piece of art on the wall. And we have lowered we have lowered this chair rail down to an actual chair height. Well, we've got a gray, gray bedroom. Um, shades of, of white and gray, and it, it, some of these are verging into blue, but but that was as far as they dared to go. Uh, it's also way, way too big. This bedroom is enormous. It's so big that not only does it have a seating area here, it has a second seating area here. It, this is a bedroom so big that it has the problem of being too big for a single living room. Uh, spectacular. Good job.
I, I love to feel like I'm sleeping in an auditorium. All right, and these, what is with all of these chairs gazing out the window? How much time are they spent? I like, I like to look out the window every so often. I don't know that I ever like need a dedicated seating area to do it. That's just all the time at the ready to gaze out the window. It's, that's some captive vibes. I, I feel like people this passionate about staring out the window are people that aren't allowed to leave this house. Got a bathroom with a little seat here. That's an interesting touch. I guess maybe this is a changing room here. So you've got a, a seat to change. Indeed, we do have a changing room slash walk-in closet. Lots of drawers here. I do like the idea of having windows in the dressing room so you're not like getting dressed in the dark and you can actually see how things are going to look together. It's, it's definitely a rich person luxury that is not practical for most houses, but it is conceptually nice. And a gray bathroom with uh, some very intense stonework around this shower, which I'm, I am excited to see this shower because that looks enormous. And we've got, all right, I, I love a good gigantic bathtub. Uh, I have nothing against the freestanding bathtubs, except that they're a little annoying to clean around. But, you know, you've got staff for that, I guess. Um, this one, I would have trouble getting in and out of. I'm a small person. I feel like I'd need a step stool. And then the trouble with the step stool is on the way out. Your feet are wet. It's dangerous. But I, I don't imagine that there's a graceful way like, like, you'd have to, like, swing your leg over and, like, flop yourself into it and then do the same thing on the way out and probably just land in a wet, naked heap on the floor. Good lord. All right, we've got a second bathroom here. This looks like it's attached to another bedroom. Everything white in this one. That's a nice change of pace. And we got some windows with binoculars. Uh, I guess that's so you can see if your husband's ship has come into shore yet. I, I, don't, I don't know how they talk. <laughs> there, is, there is this recurring theme of the two chairs facing out. I, I think that this is, this is a real dink household. For those of you not familiar, it's a dual income, no kids. These are people who are like, it's just you and me. No one else is invited. No one else is invited to this house. This is our space. We got two cups. We got two chairs. We are looking at the ocean and we are not looking inward. Oh, that giant window is in the bathroom with binoculars. Oh, who's standing in this bathroom? And, and like, can you imagine if you like really had to pee? but you had to wait for someone to stop looking out the window with binoculars so that you could go, well, I guess you wouldn't have to because there's seven bathrooms in this house, but my point remains. We've got a closet to a bedroom. I see more binoculars on windows. Do they have a set of binoculars for every, these people are literally obsessed with looking out the window. What is, what is the matter with, are they allowed to leave? I'm curious. It's a gray room with binoculars so you can gaze wistfully out the window. Are those, are those more binoculars? This is a different room. I think those are more binoculars. I can't really tell, but I'm in my heart. I think it is. Oh, we got another giant tub. This one looks marginally easier to get in and out of, but now that other tub just has me thinking about like these freestanding tubs and how one disembarks from them. Um, it's, it's, it's a very thin rim. You can't like sit on that and swing your legs over. You really have to just whoop one leg over and, and then the other. Oh, uh, right. And again, we're all gray and white in here, of course. Oh. Look at that, they're putting some of those millions of vases to, to good use. Maybe I should get some tiny vases. That sounds like a, a good way to have 
little tiny flowers in a bunch of places in your house. This, I believe, is a bedroom we saw before, and we can see through to the bathroom. Another, this is a new bedroom. This one has stadium seating so that people can watch you fuck. And no colors. We, I think this might be a baby blue on, on the comforter, but I'm, I'm not sure on that. This is an interesting little spot. You got like a booth here. That's, that's kind of a fun space. I, I'm going to say it. I like that. I like this little heart there. That's adorable. All right, we've got some outdoor space. Looks like a covered gazebo or veranda. I don't know what the terminology is. And we got lots of we've got lots of flowers, a good view out onto the ocean. We do love to look at the ocean here. Uh, oh, oh, we got a bird condo. That's you know what? Because because when you are living in a mansion, you want to make sure that your birds are also living in a mansion. Uh, respect. Respect. And we got some treacherous stairs down to a treacherous hill. Another view on that patio. It is a very nice outdoor space. Uh, I'm, you know, trying to put together that, that trapped in, in the house, gazing out with binoculars vibe, I'm, I'm thinking maybe... Maybe it's like, you know, I've been doing Dracula daily and I'm, I'm thinking about Jonathan Harker trapped in Dracula's castle up on the giant cliff precipice. And you know what? The, you, you could pretend that this is a, a giant cliff precipice. Another view on the bird condo. And here's our two chairs staring outward at the sea. This, this is a motif. If, if it happens more than... More than three times, it's a motif. And we got, oh, this is a nice little garden area. We got raised beds. I'm assuming that the, the soil, the native soil in Maine is probably not that hospitable uh, to gardening. Uh, it's, it's probably a rocky soil, you know, oceanic kind of soil. Um, so having these raised beds here, and it looks like they're making good use of them. I think I spy a little greenhouse area even. Uh, this is fantastic. I am jealous of this. I would love to have a setup like that. They really love that bird condo. And those are some very treacherous stairs that you have to climb. Maybe this is the tragedy of this house. Maybe whoever lived in there uh, somehow became unable to traverse these these steps, which are the only way up to the house. And so they were trapped on the property and, and must had to had to gaze wistfully out the window at the sea, waiting for rescue. Oh look at the dock. That's a long ass dock. Holy shit. I I get a little antsy about docks. Uh I I would feel nervous going that's that's so far that's like a two block long dock that's just hovering over the ocean and this isn't this isn't Miami ocean you know there's there's monsters in all of the ocean but Miami it's at least shallow and you could like run this is this is cliffside ocean which means you're you're like you fall in there you're going to break something you're going to bash your head open that's hmm and it looks like everyone, well, I mean, you have to do the dock that way because you're about two stories up the cliffside. At least they don't have to worry about the rising ocean levels with climate change. We'll give them that. But that is, that is fucking terrifying. There's a support pillar halfway down. Oh. You know what? I'm just, I'm going to wait till 2050. The ocean will be up here and the dock will be able to just stop there. That's a reasonable spot for the dock. I'll wait until then. Here's another look on that little patio. Oh my God, it's more binocular. I, I want to tell myself that they are just like moving the same pair of binoculars from picture to picture. But why would they do that? Like, why would they? So there's got to be like at least four pairs of binoculars in this house. I'm suspecting five. I, I assumed that 
the the windows that we saw before were the windows in the bathroom because of the binoculars but now i'm realizing that it could have been an entirely separate set of windows with binoculars and it's they're not cheap binoculars they aren't at, at least to get a good pair and i assume these people are rich enough to get a good pair what is their binocular budget it's they're they're it's a, a very specific subset of hoarding. They hoard tiny vases and binoculars. More greenery. We can see the yacht. I don't know if that's actually, I, I think that's a yacht. I don't know what qualifies as a yacht. I, I stay away from large bodies of water as much as possible. But rich people do love their boats. They love their yachts. They are willing to go down treacherous mile-long piers just to get to their fucking yachts. And here's the view out the porthole. And here's the view from the boat with the fucking American flag hanging off the back. Well, at least they've got colors on the boat. That's the first colorful object I've seen that they own. You know, I bet, I bet the real estate agent or the photographer that took these pictures was like, oh, we really need this shot. We really need a shot of the house from a boat. But they just wanted to go on a boat ride. I think that's what happened here. And this is Maine. This is nothing terribly exciting. Yeah, a pottery barn house. Uh, but with, with a few ominous and strange works the the dual chairs gazing out the window the binoculars the the f tubs that you have to flop in and out of that's uh, the the vases it's you know what every person that you meet may seem like a normal person at first but if you poke far enough you will find out a way in which they are just an absolute freak and and i feel like this house has just provided us the faintest glimpse of what is wrong with these people, aside from being, you know, wealthy. Um, it's, it's, uh, I, I don't know how much this actually speaks to the, the wealth of Maine. I imagine, you know, a, a coastal mansion, that's, that's typical. Um, the rest of it, I don't know how that plays in. I'm proud of the photographer for getting that boat shot. Good for them. Well, if you saw anything that you think I missed, uh, feel free to leave a comment uh, or about anything that pops into your head, really. Other than that, like, subscribe, and have a good one.